The Art of the Con, The Most Notorious Fakes, Frauds, and Forgeries in the Art World by Anthony M. Amore is a compelling account of some of the most significant deceptions in the history of art. Throughout the book, Amore, who is a security and theft expert, draws upon a wealth of historical data, interviews, and case studies to explore the dark underworld of art forgery and fraud, shedding light on both the perpetrators and the often surprisingly inattentive victims who facilitate this high-stakes deceit. Amore begins by setting the stage for the reader, describing the extensive amount of money that circulates within the art market, which makes it a fertile ground for fraudsters. With billions of dollars at play, the motivation for tricking collectors, museums, and investors is significant. Art forgery is not a modern phenomenon, and Amore traces its roots back to a time long before the contemporary art market exploded. The author takes readers on a journey through a series of case studies involving some of the most infamous art cons in history. Each example delves into the methodologies and psychological ploys utilized by con artists to dupe the art world's elite. What emerges is a pattern of deception that often relies more on exploiting the emotions and ego of the buyer than on the technical skill involved in crafting the counterfeit art pieces. One of the central narratives in the book is the story of Han van Meegeren, a Dutch painter and forger who is known for his fake Vermeers. Van Meegeren's story is a classic example of how forgers can take advantage of historical gaps and the desire for art experts to make significant discoveries. Van Meegeren capitalized on the absence of Vermeer's works from certain periods by producing forgeries that fit seamlessly into the supposed portfolio, thereby hoodwinking an entire generation of art historians and experts. John Drew and John Myatt form another focal point in Amore's roundup of deceit. Their conspiracy produced numerous fakes that infiltrated reputable auction houses and private collections. Myatt, the artist, skillfully mimicked the styles of famous painters, while Drew manipulated the provenance, the documented history of the pieces, to create an illusion of authenticity. Their operations reveal the reliance of the art world on provenance and how its docility can be exploited. In the book, Amore also explores the case of Wolfgang Beltraki, who, along with his wife Helene, created forgeries that were so convincing that even top experts and art historians were fooled. The Beltraki's fakes were not direct copies, but rather lost pieces, created to fit seamlessly into artists' overs, and it is their insertion into the narrative of art history that Amora points to as a sophisticated form of storytelling that underpins successful forgery. Alongside these individual actors, Amore also addresses the issue of criminal organizations involved in art crime. Networks that deal with stolen and forged art, such as the Sicilian Mafia, reveal that forgery is not an isolated phenomenon, but is often part of larger criminal enterprises. The complexity of these crimes and the sophistication with which they are carried out illustrate the organized nature of art crime. The author also examines the psychological dimension of deception, the mindset of the forgers, and the willing suspension of disbelief by victims eager to believe in the veracity of their purchases. Perpetrators often possess a mix of artistic talent, audacity, and a taste for revenge against perceived slights from the art establishment. Meanwhile, victims are swayed by the allure of owning a piece of history, the promise of financial gain, and at times, their arrogance in believing they are beyond being conned. An underlying theme of the book is the emotional impact of art frauds. Fakes do not just represent financial loss. They also betray the trust and emotional investment that buyers and the broader public place in art. When a highly regarded piece is unmasked as a forgery, it can send ripples of doubt throughout the entire world of art appreciation. Furthermore, Amore dedicates parts of his book to exploring the mechanisms that the art world could adopt to mitigate these frauds. He underscores the importance of rigorous due diligence, scientific analysis, and a more skeptical approach to provenance as methods that could help minimize the impact of forgers on the art market. He argues, however, that despite technological advancements in authentication processes, the art world continues to be vulnerable due to human factors, pride, greed, and a persistent desire for discovery that can cloud judgment. The subjective nature of art valuation and the lack of a centralized authentication authority are inherent weaknesses that con artists can exploit. 
In the conclusion of the book, Anthony M. Amore reflects on the state of the art world and its ongoing battle against forgery and fraud. He implies that the thrill of the hunt for rare and previously unknown works of art, combined with the large sums of money involved, ensures that art cons will continue to be a concern. Despite advances in the science of art authentication, the art of the con relies heavily on human psychology, which has proven to be the most difficult aspect to safeguard against. Amore calls for a more educated and cautious approach to art collection, where buyers and experts are mindful of the signs of forgery and are vigilant in their efforts to uphold the integrity of the art world. In The Art of the Con, Anthony M. Amore ensures that the narrative is not just a chronicle of deceit, it also serves as a cautionary tale. It is a vivid reminder that the allure of beauty, coupled with the potential for enormous profit, will always attract those who are willing to blur the lines of morality. The book suggests that navigating the art world requires not just an eye for artistic detail, but an understanding of the darker elements that operate in the shadows of an industry celebrated for its culture and sophistication. You can listen to the full audiobook for free by following the URL in the description.